Okay, Raynaud's disease. So when we talk about the pronunciation of Raynaud's disease. Raynaud's? Right, some people say Raynaud's, Raynaud's. some people say Raynaud's, Raynaud's, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it. But I, I think the best way to take a look at that is by doing exactly that, looking at it. Yeah. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, picture here. Classic. Right? So here we got this, this poor person. Their ring finger is like totally blanched out. So what are, what's the etiology? What are the uh, mechanisms whereby we get this process? People either get exposed to uh, dramatically cold temperature or they have yep. like some psychosocial stress that happens that activates this. So uh, irrespective of that, um, the eliciting factor, what we end up with is, is this profound arterial spasm, so much so that there's like no blood flow to the digit. Yeah. So fingers, while that's a commonplace that's involved, it can be the toes, the nose, other kind of regions of the body can be as, um, uh, involved as well. So we end up with these classic color changes. So white or this blanching is the first uh, initial change that happens. Then we get this kind of um, process where the uh, we end up with this bluish or yeah, cyanotic. You can see it on the tip of the finger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can see that kind of bluish discoloration, this cyanotic discoloration. And then finally, we get a uh, re return of blood flow, so much so that the person gets this throbbing. We've probably experienced something similar to that, right? Yeah. When you have, Just when go you outside get, in the cold and look exactly, at your fingers. Right, in a place that snows, <laughs> unlike in a Southern California comes red. So white, blue, and then red. Right, right. So those right. are the kind of uh, classic uh, color changes that we see uh, in this process. So the um, duration can be uh, several minutes to, you know, even longer than that um, uh, as, a, as a process. So we talk about, and actually, if you take a look at the the image here, you can see cardiac cycle behind this uh, person's index <laughs> finger. taking notes. So this is actually, so I don't think I'm, I'm violating anyone's uh, personal information with this. So this is actually a student of mine in, when I was teaching cardiac physiology. So I must have just <laughs> stressed, stressed her out, out so much <laughs> <laughs> that that finger just blanched out. Um, so she said I could use this photograph. Uh, so we talk about what are, what are the uh, um, uh, associations that we make with this disease. You can have a primary Raynaud's disease process, or this can be um, uh, housed under this, this qualification called Raynaud's phenomena that can be associated with other connective tissue diseases, we mentioned yeah. we're hypothyroidism, talking. malignancy. Sure. Um, I mean, bizarre things like Crest syndrome. Right, Crest syndrome. You just want to make sure there's no systemic findings that might suggest that there's an underlying etiology and this right. is not idiopathic. Right, right. And then with respect to treatment, the, the best way to treat this is prevention. <laughs> so <laughs> avoiding those kind of stressor or circumstances or, or warm like your a, hands um, or whatever affected yeah, parts. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We can um, you can try to do some uh, therapeutic interventions, calcium channel blockers, this kind of yeah. like the, the standard and way. If if the general measures, supportive measures aren't working, right, don't work. But uh, so there we go. Cool. Raynaud's. 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 Raynaud's disease. <laughs>